Here we go. Hey, this is Dave Cohen on Guitar Tales. We are thrilled to have with us James McGill of Lifespeed. James, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. How you doing? I'm nice good. This is remote, I think, number four or five. I forget already. You know, we all forget these things now. It's so long since uh, I think people have seen each other. <laughs> and no. Well, let's let's uh, do a little toast. Man. We, we tried it uh, in our pregame. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. What are you so, drinking there? In there? I am drinking um, a Medela. Medela Medel Dark. Semi-dark. Nice. What are you drinking there? And the Kendall Jackson Chardonnay. Oh, very nice. I almost brought up it. I have a I got a dog in here. I almost <laughs> just knocked something over. Um, I almost brought a Chardonnay up. I should have. Um, so the last time I saw you uh, was at Bar A recently, and it was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, uh, during this whole, you know, social distancing thing, uh, I don't think anybody knows what, what to do or what's going on. I mean, for me, I, uh, you know, I do a lot of different things. I wear a lot of different hats, um, life speed. And then I do a lot of different things with McGill and company, which is my thing. I do a duos with several different drummers and percussionists. And I have a, trio which consists of some of the people in life speed some without okay uh, it's a match you know um the players for the situations right uh, right and and it's really cool because every every guy that i use brings something different and unique to the situation even though it is cover music but still right. they have a, um well look there's an art to cover music right i mean I guess. Um, I think there is. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like interpretations of how people do it and stuff. If that's what you mean, something like that. If you're yeah. doing that part and everything. But um, you got um, my son has to grab something. Oh, well, that's this. This is the great world. So you you've got your son has to grab something. I've got a a puppy I've had for a day who's crapping all over my house right now. So puppy, it's all the same. Puppy's name. Uh, his name is Bo, but my son spelled it B A U X. Oh, fancy! fancy Very Bo. fancy. Well, he's a Tulane kid, and uh, so is his sister. So they want a little French thing. All right, so he'll all make right. an appearance. Yeah, I know I'm all over the place, but yes. So, um, my my booking agent Mike Arbini from 107 was talking to Tom Janero, the owner of Barre, and they wanted to do something to raise um, money for the EMTs, and everybody's like, you know. They didn't know what to, you know, they, they, they were supposed to be, they, they wanted their, they wanted to do the spring bash was supposed to be on that day, the bar. Right, was, right. Yeah. You know, it's like 10 bands and it's always a great time. It's like their kickoff to the, well, and, you know, Ryan Willie from New Jersey Audio Visual and uh, Nelty Films, I think it is. They all set this whole production up and we were asked to do it. And we're like, absolutely. You know, we did the Tuesday nights for so many years as life speed. And, uh, man, I, I mean, it was the first, you know, we haven't played together in a month, but it was just, just really, they did, they just went over the top with the production and everything. I was like, you know, I, I can't thank those guys enough for, for doing what they did. And we raised some money for the cause. And it was, it was a, it was a great day. And, you know, Tom and Tim O'Neill from Bar A were, uh, really, really, uh, gracious and helpful and and it was just a team effort everywhere well i gotta tell you i watched it and it, it had electricity you know like like you know there were i think on average over 500 people always watching which is amazing for a virtual event like that maybe even more there was and, five, i want to say there was five i, I want i think it was five thousand oh man i saw five it was probably five thousand then which is even more amazing and yeah, yeah. the production value was uh, what, what's the comparison better than network television the, the the lighting the sound they had a warm-up dj like you felt like you were about to be watching and you were watching a live event oh it was funny somebody said i uh, they wish it was a, a, a crappier day out so more people were inside with it, stuck inside to watch it but we had a good turnout anyway of viewers and stuff so no, it was, it, it was 
absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed it. I felt a little bit of energy coming through my computer to me, and I was glued to it. And you guys played really, really well. And, and what's nice is that the sound came through super well. And, and this is sort of the world we're living in right now. You know, you, you, know, you went to a, a, a socially distanced bar. I know they took a lot of time to make it a safe environment for the musicians. They did. They had the regular, the, the regular Spari stage with our drummer on uh, stage left and our guitar player on stage right. And then they extended the stage. So my bass player was six feet from my singer. And, uh, you know, you just want to do it proper. You don't want to break any rules, uh, but also want to, you know, you know, you just want to do, they, they want to be safe and do it right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it really came off like that. And this is the strange world world we're all living in right now. You know, um, you would normally go there and, and you would be next to each other and you'd be all sweating on top of each other. There'd be thousands of people watching. Uh, and so you are a working musician. And yep. here you are, I don't, what are we, 35 days into um, social distancing and quarantining more, maybe? For March 14th was our last gig. So that's 45-ish, 50 days, 50-ish. And uh, yeah, they, I think they closed it down on the 16th or something like that, right? By, by uh, my favorite holiday, St. Patrick's Day. Right, right. <laughs> One of mine, too. I don't remember all of my St. Patty's days, but um, that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so in terms of making a living, I want, I want to touch on this a little bit. Um, I know there, there's a lot of musicians working um is it points and i know there's a venmo way to uh, get some money coming in how, did, how are you making a living right now or working uh, toward it well i mean you know so i was playing this place every other thursday uh called the blarney station in east rutherford and after the first like i i first did a live stream like a couple of days after everybody was just shut in the house Right. And you now I didn't even have a Venmo account back then. I didn't know what it was. I right. know. And, uh, I knew what it was, but I just I didn't have one. And then everybody's like, "What's your Venmo? What's your Venmo?" And I got one. And then uh, I said, "If I'm going to do this," I said, "This is so the place, the Blarney, the Blarney Station, Rutherford. It's a really special place. It's like a Cheers. Everybody that goes there knows everybody else, and it's it's like a big family. And the owner, Stephen Margie, and already they're great people um so i said to steven i said hey man i said i want to bring i want to bring the blarney to to the people that that do it so can i broadcast live from your place when you're closed he goes i think it's a great idea and i, I might i i might have to say i was one of the first people to do it um because i just it's such a special place and people can feel like they're at the blarney you know and i hope someday right. that you'll be able Get out and, and see what I'm talking about. I would Tornado. love to see you guys there. Yeah, and, but but um, point is, it was a way for me to, you know, give do a, a live stream in a familiar way to people. I mean, I've been playing right. there for again. I got a lot of repeat offenders that come and see me and stuff, and uh, it was just cool. So I put up my Venmo. So I was, I'm I'm basically making a living off off, off of uh, you know. Um, doing tips and I've got a couple of gigs scheduled, virtual gigs that are Interesting. Scheduled. Yeah, it's it's a it's a total you know, it's it's weird. Um <laughs> it's weird like not having contact, but I mean I've at one point my 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 uh my streaming show I you know I'll take phone calls, I'll hook my phone up into my PA, I figured out how to do that. And then I'll use like sound effects for applause or something, just something to be different or, or, or just, you know, I guess not be bored myself. Right. And you know, what I found what was interesting in the wiring, at least in my brain. So when I watched some of the late night television, it seems so strange and lonely for me when I didn't hear a live studio audience. And now my brain is adjusted. So like I'll watch Trevor Noah and some of those other folks and it, it no longer feels weird. Uh, for me to listen to comedy or music, for that matter, without a live audience, it, it's it's become normal. All right, I'll, I'll usually just applaud for myself after. after. <laughs> so nothing changed. And yeah, no, no, it's, a, it's not right, a, right. You're used to hearing, you know, you know, people saying you suck or you're good or whatever. You know. 
and, and, and you know, we will slowly come out of it. Um, you know, I, I, I was listening last night, uh, Bill Maher, and I, and I like him because he, he... I saw the post. I reposted it. But is, is anything about um, about the immune system? Yep. Yep. I put that on my Facebook page. Funny you should say that. I don't agree with everything that Bill Maher says, and I'm not going to get my political views or anything yeah. else like that. But he did make sense in that one monologue that he did, that end monologue that he did. I agree with you. I, I think that he, he manages to offend everyone. You know, um, at times I, I spent a New Year's Eve with him once when he did a, one of those uh, uh, New Year's Eve shoots with Jay Leno to a friend of a friend of a friend. I was sitting there on Times in the middle of Times Square, Bill Maher, my buddy and I and roaring crowds all around us. And, and That's crazy. Yeah, it was very crazy. Uh, what's that? Or is he a dick? I, you know what? He, he was very good on the air. Well said. Well played, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think he's very talented. Um, and he was fine to me. Um, I could say those things, which are all positive. Well, he was very kind to me. Oh, good. And he, really was, good. and he was very good on you. So I could say those things. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, he chain smoked all night 20 some odd years ago. Really? Yep. Yep. And, and not, not the funny stuff, just cigarettes all night. Um, personal so, um, I feel like we're ignoring a friend. You have a red friend in your arms that we were chatting oh. about before we went live. Yeah, that, that, a, wait, don't show the headstock yet. Okay. What, do, what do people think that is? Everybody thinks it's a Paul Reed Smith. And it looks like one. The Hamer. Yeah, look at that. My buddy used to play for the Benjamins, Abel Ruiz, great, fantastic guitar player. And he brought this over to my house and he's like, play this thing. I'm like, Holy shit, dude! The thing is great, and it's it's one of those guitars when you play, it's just it was it was like made for me. Like I was comfortable right out of the get, just playing it. And I'm like, hey man, if you ever ever want to get rid of this, let me know, man, and and I'll buy it from you. And you know, he wasn't he wasn't jazzed about it. Like after a while, I guess it it, it didn't really, you know, it's, you know, it was just you know wasn't for him. So he called right. me up. He, I thought I said absolutely, absolutely, and I use this one a lot in, in live speed. And I just, I just recently had all my guitars, like redone the stuff that I, um, you know, um, that have been sitting around and fret, they needed fret jobs and stuff because you have time right. now. But yeah, it's a good guitar, man. I like it. Plays you know what I like? The contour of the body, I would imagine, it's pretty shiny now, but that thing must shine up real nicely. You know, just because as you go back and forth, I, I love the way the light catches the contours. And then, you, I called it trim, but there's another word, banding, I think you said. Binding. Binding. Yeah, that little white there. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's good. It sounds good. It's like... <laughs> in between a single and a... Even it's a hamburger, it's got that, that, that quality of a... Of a um, You'll hold it up a bit. Let me see what the pickup situation is. What's that? Oh, no. All right, so you got two humbuckers on there, but you could switch them to single. No, 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 but it's got that kind of. Uh, it's, a humbucker. it's got that kind of twang if you needed it. It's cool, you know. It's interesting. I could say this now. So Zoom take Zoom's mics take a while to catch up, you know. So like we were getting really great sound. But you can always hear that the tone of the guitar is great, but when we you'll hear when we do the playback, sometimes Zoom's uh, processing gets a little a uh, little overwhelmed. You know, I have to remember that. I have to remember that when I speak and then I play. I'll have to be like, okay, wait, I'm gonna play now. And now talk. <laughs> that actually worked. That worked. And you know what else I did? I, I muted myself when you did it. Um, we had a show last week and we had some real youngins on and they helped me figure this out. If, if we can mute everyone but the person performing, it helps a bit. Even body movement. 
that I think overwhelms the bandwidth, and that's probably not really the right word, but it, it feels, so if I'm moving and, and speaking, sometimes right. it might screw up the sound. Phase thing, yeah. Yeah, like that happened with you when you moved your hands, I lost your audio a little bit. Right. But it's our, it's our world now, right, for the time being. Sucks. <laughs> it does, it does. Now let, let me talk about something else. Um, I understand you have an endorsement now, let's talk about that. Uh, Iron Bound Cider, I have there uh, on my, my Marshall amp, I have it here, it says Jersey takes care of its own. Right here, this little thing. Uh, Iron Bound Hard Cider, they uh, graciously sponsored me and my singer Sean from, from Lifespeed to promote their, their product um, during the pandemic because we're doing a lot of online stuff and uh, you know, I've done some work for them before. Great company, Jersey-based company out of Asbury, New Jersey. Uh, Charles Rosen, the president, and his whole staff up there make a great product. I really actually do love it. I was drinking it last night. I drink it every Saturday night on my, uh, um, on my, uh, my, my live, my stream. Um, it's really good. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. That's great. And you know what? Liquor sales probably, well, I think liquor sales in bars are certainly suffering, but what we traditionally drink at home, I think, is is doing okay, you know, within reason. I think people are drinking a little more at home than they used to. They are. No, they are. Because, I mean, I'm like I said, we, we, I'm sorry. I know we're all over the place and just talking. We're just BSing. It's all but, good. Yeah, right on. Um, like, doing the live stream from the Barney, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fortunate to have sometimes, like, this, as much as, you know, I'll look at the, I'll look at the total views, and there's, like, 5,000 views or 3,500 views, and online there'll be 250 people and 130 people and you know the you know it goes up and down it fluctuates but um i forgot my i forgot my fucking point um oh we're talking about liquor sales at home yeah 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 thank you thank you so sure. so you know i'm drinking and then i'll ask people to flash the emojis uh if we're doing, oh, right, a, right. doing a social i'll ask people what they're drinking and they'll send me little emojis of little pictures of bourbon or beer or uh you know whatever and i i, I funny because today uh, i was checking my uh my facebook somebody's like or yesterday i was checking my facebook it says i got some ironbound cider on your recommendation which is kind of cool you know that's but, really cool i mean I, I, you know i'm i'm not gonna you know in, you know endorse something i don't like right you know? right yeah have the opportunity yeah, I mean, there's yeah. always there's always other products if you didn't like it, and I'm guessing that that's Newark based from the Ironbound district. Is that sort of the oh, story? It, 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 yeah, they have a whole business model that's based in uh, on Jersey and everything, and their 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 farm is beautiful. It's out in Asbury, New Jersey, not Asbury Park, Asbury out 78. Oh, really? Um, I don't even know of that town. Yeah, right before Pennsylvania, it's in Asbury, New Jersey. And they do tours. They have a great tasting room, and you should really check it out. Well, they, I'll, I'll take you up there. All right, I will go with you. It, it, it's, it's a date um, in 2021. We'll, <laughs> we'll go up there. Um, <laughs> no, it, it should be sooner than that. I, I think we'll see how the experiments go now. But some states are starting uh, to open up at least a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, it's funny. I'm staring at your amp. And all I can think of when I'm looking at Marshall is Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Which have you seen that go around social media? Yeah, but a, this is a Mars, not a Marshall. This is a Mars now. If you I, look, I was looking uh, at that. Look, the the uh, the age got cut off. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's very cool. But have you seen that little uh, snippet that's going around um, social media where they have Marshall, Marshall, Marshall? It's like a Brady Bunch reference. No, I have not. I, I can't even look at a Marshall amp the same anymore. I think we've posted it a couple of times, but it just has three Funny. Marshalls on top of each other. Um, right. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Uh, now, cool. um, I want to take a look, because um, we're doing these shows relatively short compared to most. So we're actually, believe it or not, we've already been going almost a half hour. You have this really ah. cool guitar with the um, with that um, Fender Squire neck. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Hold on. Um, That's a cool one. Yeah. yeah um, so this one. I love that. That that is, this super is uh, cool. 
this one is uh so this 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 is an american body and right. it was on um it was on a, a a table in uh this guy's house and it was used as an ashtray and my buddy j3 who's a fucking tremendous guitar player songwriter we don't singer. fucking curse on this show okay we don't right. fucking curse ever all right all right <laughs> <laughs> but he's fucking tremendous and I played in a band with him. I played bass for him in a band called Section Eight. He's now the front of house for the Struts, okay. Uh, band, and he's been they've been opening for the Who and Foo Fighters and stuff. And they're a great wow. band too. He had taken this, and he got a, a, a this is a Japanese squire neck from the '90s, and it's it's just awesome. And sort of modeled it after Eddie Van Halen's Frankenstein, where he drilled the pickup right into the wood, and it's just a really Sounds really fucking. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really cool sounding guitar, very, very unique setting. I used it a lot when I was playing in. Uh, Band. Sorry, I had to wait for it. the sound to catch up. I keep. I said I used this guitar in a band when I played a band called Three Piece, and he was the singer, bass player, and my drummer T from Lightspeed was a drummer. And uh, yeah, this is my this was my main act for a while. I, I love the look of that, and I would imagine you pretty much have infinite sustain on something like that. It, it's a definitely a unique guitar. It's. Um, it's been with me for years. I just had a fret job on it. I couldn't let it die. Um, some of the other ones I have over here is my my 78 Les Paul. Oh, that's a nice looking guitar too. This one so I used a lot in life speed. And, and then uh, one night we had a ski trip up in New York somewhere uh, when, you know, bands used to do ski trips and all and fans would come and take a bus ride up and go skiing. But nobody skied. Everybody just drank in a hotel. Right. And one night it was real late. I, both buses got lost or something. I mean, these are professional fucking bus drivers, man. And you got lost going to your destination. Fuck off. But one o'clock in the morning comes around. My drummer T's like, hey, man, you know, there's a lot of people that are angry. We should play. So we're in this big ballroom and I see my guys on top of a table. They're all on top of like the tables playing each one. And we're wireless. I'm like, I'll try that. I'll get up there. I like, go to. I get up there, it's like the last song of the line. I think we're doing like Disturbed or something. And I, uh, I went to jump off the table, but as I went to jump off, the table collapsed and I fell straight down to it and cracked the headstock. Oh um, no. It was a mess. It How were you? I was a mess. <laughs> I, was, I was a funnel of mud. Uh, it, it was terrible. It was terrible. The, the guitar is in my hotel room. It's just mangled and and i have my buddy uh joe gita from suite of sounds or i forget who it was they they fixed it up for me so the very dark sounding guitar is very heavy it's mahogany and the good looking they're... guitar what's the deal with the pickups i see there uh at least one is not original yeah it's uh i, I have jb jeff Beck's and all mine the jb seymour dark jb's i love them i it's just, it works for me you know very cool not, not in all of them but um majority of them this is the one this one i've been using for for mostly a, a be my this is the one i played with uh bar a it's it's a the schecter the pete townsend gold top oh, I, uh, uh, i'm a who fanatic and i'm a pete fanatic so i'm partial to that thing. that's a nice right. looking guitar so kind of cool because you know it's got the humbucker thing but it's uh it's got a, a tap coil so you can just pull it out and split the pickups here to go single coil. Oh, nice. So it's, it's got a lot of different little, you know. <laughs> Put it back in to that more of a crunchier thing. That's a nice, I, I think that's my favorite of the ones you've shown us. That, it, it looks 
you know what I like? It does a lot, but it looks simple. Yeah, and it's got a nice clean look. Yeah, it's it's, it's cool. It's uh for four hundred bucks back in whenever it was. It's 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 bang for the buck. Oh, that's not bad at all. And we have this one. This is one I went into Guitar Center. I never really buy guitars from Guitar Center, not because I don't want what they have, but they just you know. Whatever, for whatever reason. But this you is buy it. from smaller venues. Is my best. Is Look at that! I love that. Relic. Um, it's got Layler pickups in it. It sounds really, really fucking good. I went in for a, a pack of strings and came out with an eighteen two thousand dollar guitar. <laughs> Plays good. It's cool look. It looks good. I think that's very cool. By the way, that that one was um, our sound stayed pretty intact when you uh, played on that one just now. Oh, is that right? Yeah, maybe it's a volume thing. I don't know. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, uh, it's cool. And, uh, put the the cigarette stain in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then uh, the neck on the back is unfinished. Oh, look at that. That's. And that's just now. Was that like a, a shtick kind of thing, or is that real? Was it really worn out? No, it's it's relic, meaning that it's 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 designed to look aged. Gotcha. Right. Right. Well, you're aging it yourself, which is good. Yeah. It'll age on your watch. I'm getting old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, got the, a, I got this other one. One last one here. All right. Our, it's believe it or not, it's a Mexican strat, but it's the Wayne's World Strat, if you could nice. see, there's Wayne's World. Oh, that's so cool. And you got a four bolt neck. That's cool. Yeah, but it's actually, it plays great. It plays phenomenal. I just changed the inside pickups and uh, yeah, it's all good. You know, I always felt like with Strats, it's, it's not always as much about the model as just whatever one you pick up within the model line. Right. You know, well, I, it's definitely, the, you know, it's definitely your, your type of wood too, you know. That's got yeah. a lot to do with it. Yeah, I had a just a nondescript 78 strap for a long time, and that's, people would tell me it was the best they ever played. Really? And it was there was nothing objectively special about it, but it was just the fastest strat I ever had, or even oh. played for that matter. But it, right. I think it just depends. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean it depends, you know, you could you could have a guy who made it on a good day or a guy who made it on a bad day. Right, yeah, right. And you could have a tree who was having a good day when it got cut down or a tree that was having a bad day when it got cut down, you know? True, yeah. true, true. So what do you, let me say this as we sort of wrap up a bit here. So what are you going on next during COVID as opposed to post-COVID? So, so I have, I'll still be doing my live streams. Um, and there, it's acoustic guitar based, you know, I don't really play electric when I do that thing and and it's and basically what I do is I ask people what they want to hear I do you know some singing and uh, I ask them I do, I'm trying to do themes now like like I did one hit wonders and I did 80s at 8 90s at 9 last night I did a 70s show I might do this one I might not do like a double play Saturday where two songs of an artist or songs with the word dance in them and and it's cool because like I'll take a poll on social media as to what people want to hear and then they'll answer me, and then uh, that'll be on Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday, I got two days to learn these different songs or put it together, and it sort of keeps you on your toes. Right, you know? yeah. So, you know, I gotta, I gotta say, the one best thing about this, so the, the one best thing that come out, I've found a lot of great people that are playing, and that are live streaming, that are really, really goddamn good. That's what really I'm seeing, too. Just, you know, you... you... Yeah. You know, what do we do all day? We pull this thing out and we're, you know, we're doing like this and looking around. And, and yeah, and I'll see these people I've never heard of. You know, thanks to Scott, Scott Guitar Mrs. Stengel, you know, our guitar sales page, we have just a zillion people following and we're friends with all sorts of people. So I'll look and I'll meet these guitar, meet with air quotes, these guitar players and singers who are fantastic. And not just from his country even, you know, from all over the world. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Where do we find you now? So that that's the thing. So uh, James McGill's 
M C capital G I L L, right? Sir, um, you can go to um, either friend me on uh, the Facebook, which is James McGill, or you can go to uh, my my McGill and Co page, McGill and Company, uh, on the uh, on Facebook, and then it's Hoboken James on Instagram, and then McGill and Company dot com will be McGill and Co dot com will be uh, up soon. I have it all being done now, so. Perfect, uh, perfect. You know, you know what's interesting? When I started this little project here, I, I thought, oh, a website is so important. A website doesn't matter at all. It, it's social media, but not websites. Well, and yeah. Funny that you say that, man, because I thought the same thing, but for the websites, for the music, you know, corporate people or people who are booking corporate stuff, they want you, they want to see your website. That's it. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry, you're you're glitchy there for a minute. Um, some of the 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 social media stuff is for the people you know. They go and see your shows and their friends and fans and stuff. But there's also that corporate client that wants to see that you're a real entity. Oh, well, that makes so sense. That's why you. Yeah, and and you know it's good to have it too. You don't you, you want to be in all avenues of you know, the business, so why not? No, it's true. Well, I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, we are going to get you in the studio, if you'd like, uh, where we'll actually do like a real three-camera HD shoot. We'll hear you better. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That'd be great. It'd be fun. Um, um, there's so many there's so many good people out there that, uh, that, that play that I'm, you know, that I admire. I'm just so thankful that you actually had me on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Thrilled to have had you on. It's been a pleasure. So uh, with that, we'll uh, sign off now. Uh, please stay tuned for more shows and Guitar Tales. Check out James McGill when we uh, spread him around on Facebook and Instagram and all that. You'll get to see a lot more of him. But uh, have a great night. Thank you very much.